St. Maximus the Confessor, on difficulties in sacred scripture, the responses to Thalassios. Question 33. What is the meaning of, truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that whatever he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. And how are we to understand the words, and does not doubt? Response The divine and great apostle, defining the meaning of faith, says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and conviction of things not seen. But if someone should define faith as an innate good, or as true knowledge demonstrative of ineffable good things, he would not miss the mark of truth. The Lord, moreover, when teaching about these ineffable good things and about the things hoped for but not seen, said, The kingdom of heaven is within you. Thus faith in God is identical with the kingdom of God, the two being separated only on the level of thought. For faith is the kingdom of God without visible form, while the kingdom is faith given a form in a manner befitting God. For this reason, faith is not outside of us, and when it is actualized through the keeping of the divine commandments, it becomes the kingdom of God, known only to those who possess it. If then the kingdom of God is actualized faith, and if the kingdom of God brings about an unmediated union of God and those in his kingdom, faith is clearly demonstrated to be a relational power, or a relationship that effectively realizes in a manner beyond nature the unmediated union of the faithful with the God in whom they have faith. Since the human person is composed of soul and body, he wavers between two laws, by which I mean the law of the flesh and that of the spirit. On the one hand, the law of the flesh operates by virtue of the senses, but that of the spirit by virtue of the intellect. Now the law of the flesh, operating by means of the senses, is of a nature to bind one closely to matter. But the law of the spirit, operating by means of the intellect, brings about an unmediated union with God. Thus it is only reasonable that he who does not doubt in his heart, that is, who does not distinguish in his intellect, which is to say, who does not sever the unmediated union with God, which has come about through faith, inasmuch as he is dispassionate, or rather because he has already become God through union with him by faith, is able to say to this mountain, Move, and it will be moved, indicating, through the demonstrative pronoun, this mountain, the mind and law of the flesh, which truly is heavy and difficult to move, and as far as our natural powers are concerned, is absolutely immovable and unshakable. This is because the capacity for irrationality is rooted so deeply in human nature that the majority of people think that a human being is nothing more than flesh possessing the power of sensation for no other purpose than to enjoy this present life. But all things are possible to the one who has faith and does not doubt, that is, who does not separate himself from union with God, which faith has brought about in him through the intellect, on account of the soul's relation to the body through the senses, on account of the soul's relation to the body through the senses. Whatever estranges the intellect from the world and the flesh brings it, perfected by its spiritual achievements, into close intimacy with God. <laughs>